So I want you guys to sort of look at the seam. We were talking about the seam in this video, you'll notice, but actually the seam is no problem because the paper is so thin, it really doesn't leave a big seam at all. And this is actually thicker paper even so. All right, hey, listen, if you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please hit subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, Lorenda here. Welcome to my craft room. Thank you for joining me. So today we are going to attempt a cup. We'll see how it turns out. I've never done it like this before. However, I have done cups where I've put fabric on them. So what we're going to do instead of fabric, we're going to do this paper. So I'm going to use this tumbler here and <clears throat> it's got this ridge. So I'm going to do the paper through here and then I'm going to glitter this up here. I thought that I would use this Martha Stewart glitter would look nice with that paper. So we'll see how it turns out. Now, um, I'm sorry if this ends up being kind of long because I'm gonna try and pretty much video the entire thing. since it's something that I haven't done before. It's easy to explain things that I do often, but since it's something I haven't done before, if I go back and try to just explain some later, I might miss something that is important. So. All right, so I'm just cleaning the cup with alcohol. And I'm going to use Mod Podge for this because I use Mod Podge when I do my um, fabric tumblers. So I feel like Mod Podge would be like the right thing to use. So I have my Mod Podge here. I'm going to just put it in a cup. I love using the silicone cupcake liners. I had bought a box of them off of Amazon and I use them all the time for everything. They're amazing. Just put a little bit of my, oh, that's a lot. And I've got my Mod Podge brush. I really need to buy some more because I use that thing so much. I love the Mod Podge brush. Let me just get this out of the way. <clears throat> And honestly, sometimes I just put my Mod Podge actually on my um, wax paper. But the reason why I'm putting it in a cup instead is because I'm, you know, going to have to lay that paper out. And I don't want to get Mod Podge everywhere. So I'm just going to do a nice, even, thin layer of Mod Podge like I normally would. Okay, and then so if I were doing a fabric tumbler, I would start just like this. So this is what I'm going to do just as if I were doing a fabric tumbler. Now 
Now, mind you, the paper certainly not as flexible as the fabric, but I feel like it should still be able to work. Once you get Mod Podge on paper, it's hard to take it up, so be careful. But I am going to take it up just because I don't have my paper all the way lined up. Because I have a neck on this cup, like I said, makes it a little bit weird. apply some more Mod Podge just because I, um, you know, let me cut some of this off before I apply my Mod Podge. Just to make it easier. And this is a really pretty paper. I'll save that piece because you never know when I might need to use it. Okay. So now let's see. Again, make sure that we're completely even. Okay, so there, all right. So you just put some more Mod Podge on since I Hold that off. Right there. And like I said, paper is not super forgiving, so make sure that you get it on the way you want it the first time. about the space that's left over. But yet making it even. Okay, so I think, okay, I can actually pull it tight enough. And you know, actually, instead of worrying about getting it right under there, the smart thing is going to be for me to worry about pulling it tight because, duh, I can go in with my X-Acto knife. Okay, there we go. Good lesson there. All right, so, okay. So that's it, pull it tight because I can. you can go in with your X-Acto. Which makes sense, there we go. Which of course is what I would do with my, with my fabric also. So I need to not let myself get caught up on the fact of it being paper. So now, to have an end, that lines up exactly. Let's 
good. Let me grab my exacto. I love these Cricut exacto knives. I always cut myself with exacto knives, but the Cricut one, not nearly so much. All right, so I'm trying to peel my line so because I'd like to try and get a nice even line like I do with my See, it's a little hard to, to feel. So I think that I'm going to be better off. Let's see, just pull it over. I think I'm just going to cut. Now I'm going to have somewhat of a seam and it's just the way it's going to be. But I'm sure we can blend it together nice and, and not be a big deal. that I could I'm not going to try it on this one maybe the next one that I do I'll try it because I just don't want to mess it up but I'm thinking that I probably could you know go along the edge and then cut out the underneath and bring the seams together but the honest truth is with it being paper, like I don't feel like the seams are that big of a deal. Cause they're not thick like it is with cloth. So I actually think that I feel fine about that. So I've got this around tight. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to, I need to Mod Podge, especially this area that I made the little cut in earlier where I shouldn't have. So I'm gonna Mod Podge over the entire thing.
use the Mod Podge to seal my seam really well. And I can also put my little cut back together with the Mod Podge. Which is a lovely thing about Mod Podge. All right, so I'm gonna just Mod Podge this whole thing. before I go in and cut. I think once I cut, I'll probably have to Mod Podge my seams a little bit more, just because, again, the paper is not as flexible as material is. So I'm gonna use my... because that will let me pull it more this way. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back, okay? All right, so we're back. It looks like we are pretty dry. Let me put this down. So I'm gonna go through, I'll have to put some more Mod Podge on this. Now I have a little bit of wrinkle up here, but I think that I can fix that. And I think this is going to be super cute. All right, so I am going to just kind of go through with my exacto. So when you do material, the material gets quite a bit thicker. So definitely easier to cut with the exacto. I feel like the paper's a little softer, you know? I mean, maybe if I let it wait for a while, but. It's one of those things I think that, um, you know, it always gets better the next time. Sort of learn from the first time. and But I think this is going to be cute. Um, so the one thing, though, that I'm already learning, like... Don't get your, you don't want your glue up over any place that you're not going to keep your paper and have your paper touch it because 
you know, then you get this glue, but it's the, the you know, paper on it, but it's pretty easy to clean. It's coming right off. And actually though, the nice thing is those, that little area that had bubbles actually came right out. So I think this is actually going to turn out really good. I'm pretty excited over this. And I will tell you, I think also that if I weren't using a cup with a lip in it, I think that it actually would have been easier. I thought, you know, that the lip would be easier for the first time. That's, you know, why I thought, oh, I'll use this one. How perfect is that? But I actually think that the lip made it harder. So that's good. All right. So the lip, I feel like actually made it a little bit harder for me to get um, a good line. I, it's pretty good though. And I think I'll probably, you know, with my glitter, I'll probably, I think that I'll probably like do my glitter here and fill down and like actually maybe sort of do a little down into it. You know what I mean? Now this. Now my paper on the end, I do want to have a little bit of a bottom because I want to be able to really get the epoxy on um, covering it well. So I'm just going to cut off the excess here. And I have this little tool that honestly I haven't really used I think I might have used it once since I got it. So this will be a good time, I think, to try this little tool that I have. Let me pull it out. I got this little tool from Amazon. And it is, so it's got, you can change the size by taking out the little washers. It's just a screw. I'll put the link on there. And it's got a um, razor blade in it. And then you just take and turn your cup. See if it worked. Oh, 
Oh, there you go. Now, of course, with the paper, I'll have to, um, you know, because of the Mod Podge, the Mod Podge loves to stick to the paper, so, but it's not a big deal. I'll clean it up. And also when I was holding it to turn it, I kind of, um, I should have held it up here. I was holding it down there and got my paper a little messed up. Okay, so not bad. All right, so I'm going to just go in real quick and clean up all these messy ends that I've done. feel like some of it have moved and didn't get even. I don't know. This, this little contraption feels a little dangerous to me. Like, I don't know. I feel like maybe I would have, could have done just as good with my exacto. I mean, it's nice because it's makes it nice and even. However, the shape of it or something like I don't know. I feel like you could easily hurt yourself with it. So if you choose to get one, be careful because it's definitely okay. But that's better. It's nice and even now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go through, clean up my ends, the paper, and then I'm going to Mod Podge over it again, and I'm going to glitter, okay? So, on this one, I'm going to do the cleanup and the Mod Podge and glitter on fast, okay? Save us a little bit of time. All right, so here we go. I thought that I would leave a little silver up top. I kind of like that. And I did, you know, just a little glitter on each end and kind of let it fall through. I'm really liking how it looks. So what we'll do is we will let it dry Sorry, I just want to, that seam, the seam I'm not super excited about. We'll see how it turns out. We'll let it dry and then put some epoxy on it and see how it looks, okay? So we will be back to throw epoxy on it. All right, friends. So I ended up letting this dry overnight, not because I had to, but just because I had stuff to do very important stuff. I had to go see my grandson and my daughter. We, um, my family came over and to my daughter's house and we had cake last night for my birthday because we have, um, my husband and I 
We're going to a gala tonight. Today's my actual birthday, but we're going to a gala tonight. So I can't believe it. I am half a century old. Happens fast. <laughs> Happens fast. I can't believe I'm 50. Um, so anyways, I let this dry overnight and it turned out so cute. I'm really super happy with this. Now, this paper that I used on here, I got from Hobby Lobby and it does have like a sparkle finish to it. So I think, you know, we'll do one of these also with one that doesn't have a sparkle finish and see how that works. But so far, this looks really, really good. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy and then I'll bring you back. We'll put it on the spinner and we'll see what happens. Okay. All right. See you in a bit. All right. So I have the epoxy mixed. And um, so basically this right here is just a silicone cupcake liner. I show them all the time. I just, you know, I bought a pack of them off of Amazon, but they work so well because your epoxy, you know, when it dries, it just peels out like this. It doesn't really stick on the silicone. I am going to use my silicone brush today. I actually, just so you know, I really like using my finger. The only reason I'm using my silicone brush is because I'm going to mix up um, some more because I have a couple other cups to do. And I just don't want to have a mess all over. But I may end up going to my finger anyways. Who knows? Because, you know, the finger does a really good job. Um, and if I sound muffled, I don't think I do. Sometimes I remember to say it. Sometimes I don't. Um, but I do have a mask on. I know that there's a lot of people on um, that do the cups that don't wear gloves most wear gloves but there are some that don't wear gloves there are a lot that don't wear a mask because they say it's odorless you know for me as a nurse you know i am a big advocate of wearing the proper ppe so your personal protective equipment because regardless you know fda approved odorless or not it's still a chemical and, you know, I mean, maybe it's fine, but I'm just not, I'm not an advocate of taking a chance. You know, it's not a big deal at all to wear a mask. You know, sometimes I wear my big chemical mask. Sometimes I just wear the N95 PPE mask. You know, I buy them in a pack on Amazon. They're not that expensive. You can wear it for a couple times. And then I like to wear... Um, nitrile gloves. I actually order the same exam gloves that I use at the hospital. They are these Premier Pro and I order them online also. Um, I like that particular brand just because at the hospital that's what we use and I know that they work well and I like them and they're thick and they don't break easy. So I happen to order that same type of glove but you can you know use any type that works for you um, however the nitro gloves are good for you know really not letting things get in you know um, all right so anyways enough of that so let's let's see it's the moment of magic and we'll see what happens So I chose to leave a little bit of the steel showing on both ends. However, I'm still going to do my epoxy a little bit up above the glitter because I want everything to stay on well so you want to be able to go a little bit above it and I just want to make sure everything is covered Now 
It's a little easier with my finger for me to feel whether or not everything is covered, but these um, silicone spatulas really do work well. And, you know, again, you can use them over and over because anything silicone cleans off easy. You don't want to, you can clean it while it's immediately wet with like alcohol, but once it gets a little gummy, you're better off just letting it dry and then peeling it off. So same thing on the bottom. I'm going to go down past the glitter a little bit with my epoxy. The one thing I will say when I use the brush, I'm better about not putting over an overabundance of epoxy. I tend to get really heavy handed with the epoxy and, you know, I mean, I know that I'm probably as much as I don't like to be wasteful, I'm probably wasteful because I know that I use a lot more than I need when I'm just using my my finger. All right, so this is amazing. I am so happy with how this is turning out. This looks so good. You know, I was also thinking, because I was thinking about ways that people could make a beautiful um, epoxy resin cup without it being super expensive. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about is like maybe using some tissue paper and seeing how that would work. And I was thinking that I might try that on like a um, plastic tumbler that's not super expensive, like do like, you know, kind of a Dollar Tree type. I did do a video on um, how to epoxy your cup if you don't have a turner so if you don't have a turner you can see that video because they actually do still turn out really nice if you are patient and you know willing to do it in you know just multiple layers and they really do still turn out very very nice so I was thinking that I might do one with like some tissue paper I mean, the Dollar Tree does also have some very beautiful glitter, too. All right. I just occasionally am feeling a rough patch, so I just want to make sure everything's covered. I like to kind of get this little angle on the brush, kind of allow me to make sure my edges of my glitter are covered without epoxy everywhere. All right, let's see. Find that one. So funny, I end up with so much stuff on my little shelf under my table you know I'm always cleaning it trying to be like all nice and neat and I still always end up with all kinds of stuff but I love baby wipes 
I definitely keep them baby wipes and coffee filters. Although when I was cleaning off the um, the paper, I, n I don't know if I told you guys, I used um, nail polish remover when I was cleaning the paper off of this. But I was using a coffee filter and that wasn't working. I actually ended up using my terry cloth. All right, so this turned out fantastic. Um, if you don't mind, um, I'm gonna just talk about some things that I learned on this. However, before my epoxy gets super um, sticky while we're talking, if you don't mind, I'm gonna just put the epoxy on this other one also, okay? Um, but so on this one, I feel really happy with how it turned out. I feel like um, some of the things that I think I've learned from it is to know how you're going to do your, definitely know how you're going to do your paper before you put the Mod Podge. So I was quick to put my Mod Podge, was very quick to put my Mod Podge on and I um, didn't really pay attention to where I was going to put my paper. So I think and seeing how well the Mod Podge and paper stick together, definitely know where you're going to put your mod, your paper before you put your Mod Podge. And I also was like trying to line up the ends of my paper to the ends of my cup, which was silly of me. It, you know, once I started doing it, then of course my brain realized that, oh, wait a second, I can just cut I can just cut the extra paper off. It doesn't need to. So in order to have no wrinkles in your paper, you know, realize that, you know, you'll probably be putting your paper on sort of sideways and that's okay because you're going to cut it off. And I, I think that was the biggest thing. The other thing is, so if you remember... I put Mod Podge, let it dry, and then I cut it. Well, on fabric, that's what I like to do because it makes the fabric really hard. But I think that it doesn't necessarily do that to the Mod Podge for, I mean, to the paper. I, Mod Podge and paper, for the paper to get hard, it takes a couple layers of the Mod Podge and it has to dry for quite a bit. So I think that next time I do it, I will probably cut my paper, like, you know, I'll Mod Podge it down, but I won't do the, the top side with Mod Podge until after I cut it to where I want it to be. I feel like that will be the better, um, the better solution to that. I do think that you know, I thought that using a cup with a ridge was actually going to be helpful, but I think that that actually made it a little bit more challenging. So I think, I mean, but as you can see, it worked out just fine. So I'm sure you can use any cup that you want to, but I do think that, you know, using a regular cup like these, 
will definitely, definitely be better. This cup that I'm putting the epoxy on right now, this one's for my mom. I had done a previous video on how to put the pictures on. If you're interested, I'm not doing a video on on this particular cup for my mom. I didn't do a video on it. However, what I'll tell you in this, if you saw the one on putting pictures on, a couple things that I've learned since then, I actually like Mod Podge much better for putting on pictures, and I think I'll probably do a video with Mod Podge on doing one because the Mod Podge dries faster. And I just, I use tacky glue so much that um, I use, I use tacky glue so often that I um, just naturally used it on there. However, I came back and did one, this one actually, I started with tacky glue, but I ended up doing some of the pictures with Mod Podge. And the Mod Podge was so much better because it dries faster. The tacky glue takes, you know, a lot longer to dry. And then your pictures sort of move around, whatever. The other thing is this cup here has glitter on it. And even though, I mean, it worked out fine, you can see the pictures, whatever you get a definitely, you get a much clearer, nicer um, picture, not having glitter underneath. Because the glitter does, you know, show through. So this cup for my mom, I did, you know, so she's a great grandmother. So I, I made this for her and it says handpicked for earth by my grandpa in heaven. And I have a picture of the baby underneath that, the new great grandbaby, my sweet little grandbaby. And then I have a picture of my dad and it's my dad and mom together. So she'll like that. And then um, I told you guys, you know, my dad had died, but I also have a brother who passed away. I was 15, he was 17, but he was hit by a drunk driver on his 16th birthday. And he actually ended up taking his own life. He had spent a year in the hospital, had a terrible traumatic brain injury, but he ended up taking his own life. And I was 15, he was 17. I actually walked in just as it happened. So I did, I did see that, but you know, it's very sad and you know, it's been hard for my mom all these years of course not having him here so I do have a picture of my brother on there as well I feel like you know him and my dad together probably picked the baby out and that's why he's so perfect so anyways my mom's gonna love this it's got you know picture of her and my dad my brother and the new baby on it so if you do have any interest in putting photos on, there's a video on how to do it. It's super easy and this actually lets you do it, not with regular photos, but it's on a, um, you just use a regular laser printer. Inkjet you can't use because the ink will smear but just a regular laser printer on regular printer paper. Again, 
if you do watch that and use it. I don't like the glitter underneath the pictures. So if you're going to do glitter, I would do it above where your pictures are going to be. And um, actually, I like the Mod Podge more than the tacky glue. So anyways, all right, so that's off the subject of the cup we're actually doing. So I'm going to, now that this is fun for a couple minutes, I'll show you. Look at that. It turned out absolutely beautiful. And so that was with the paper. So that is, that is definitely a yes. I would call that a Pinterest win. All right. Hey, so listen, I forgot to tell you guys, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. And I'm going to go celebrate my 50th. And I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.